There is something in common in poetry and in music in a certain way that both of them are the language of madness, which is to say that the poet and the musician together speak a natural and universal language, the original language that all creatures spoke before the fall of man. For in the Garden of Eden, before Adam and Eve had eaten of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, they understood the language of all the animals and spoke such a language themselves, which was the divine language from the beginning. This language is, of course, the language of the birds. And what does it mean? What does the shape of a tree mean? What do clouds mean? What is the meaning of the way the stars are scattered through the sky? Of course, we've tried to make sense of the stars to project upon this scattering mythological forms. But actually, music might express the arrangement of those stars more correctly. Do, 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 do. And what would that be saying? What is Bach saying? La, 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 da, dee, dee, dee. La, la, What's the meaning of that? And when a tree grows, you know, it goes kind of... And then after that it does... Both poetry and music lead us to the understanding of what this world is all about, which is, it's a dance. A rhythm. You know, to do more than just put it together and uh, get the bread. How did Sesame Street do it? and uh, what is called by some people uh, wasting time or goofing off or just relaxation or something like that is, uh, uh, it, well, it's a very difficult thing to, to understand because most people don't have the, the focus, the parameters that are necessary to understand this within uh, current sociological norms. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. <laughs> About the zoot suits and, and the Charleston. I don't want to remember that. The Charleston? Yeah. That was my favorite one. And the snake hips and the black bottoms. Salty dog. Me and my
my dad used to do snakeage. Charles? Do the yeah, we'd throw up the I'm rug, and me and my old man would get back and do it all. Well, goofing off is well, not really being what you're, you're really supposed to be doing. And um, it's, it's like you're just um, walking around doing nothing, and then you start like, um, well, putting sticks in mailboxes. And it's putting sticks in mailboxes yeah, and, and taking, Hills, and taking um, like cans out of um, garbage cans and kicking them, you know. Well, you know, um, one Sunday, my sister and her husband had this um, trailer. I don't know what, the, you know, there's all different kinds of names to it. They ha don't have the kind you drive. They have the kind you hitch on, you know. So they just think it's marvelous to go all over the country in this trailer, you know. So one summer, they asked me to come along. Well, now, my sister has six children. Now, I don't know why she thought that was so much fun, because every time they got somewhere, she just had all the dishes and all the things and all of that to do, you know. And everybody else went tracing all over into the countryside, into a lake, you know, take a dip and all of that. And then when you get to the camp place, you dump all of that. But, you know, at the camp place, they have lots of other trailers, you know, and they kind of like to get together and talk about, well, look at my trailer, and this is my kind, you know, and do you have a, really, it's just, you know, it's a moving community, and you run into people you've met the summer before, and oh, they just think it's grand. Well, I like traveling of it, you know, looking around. So I was talking to my husband about it, and he did this thing for me, and you know, it really is something. We have this window, and it looks right out on the garage. Well, who cares about looking out on the garage? You know, I mean, who cares about that? So what he did is we put a little window against the window, and we got all these old travel locks. You know, they're awfully cheap. You can just get them for nothing. And we run them. And it's kind of outside my kitchen, and I can just travel anywhere I want to. I just put on my travel log, and it goes by outside the window, just like in a trailer, but without all the inconvenience and the expense. And believe you me, those trailers are expensive. <laughs> You think you aren't getting ahead in the world? You think you aren't going to make it? Well, I want to tell you something, my friend. It's probably because you aren't willing to compare yourself and to compare your performance with that of others. Competition is the name of the game. It's been the name of the game since Adam and Eve and that snake. It's been the name of the game right down through the times of the kings and queens. It's been the name of the game ever since our forefathers founded this country on the basic principles we all know and love. Watch one of those baseball players on a major league team. Watch one of those football players taking a run around right hand. Watch one of those captains of industry struggling to get to the top. He compares his performance with the next guy and he'll walk all over that guy if he has to to get right up there to the top because the only way you have a view of the world that is worth it is from the top of the heap. Thrummula, thrummula, thrilp. Come lipsable, lipsable, lilp. Dim thricken me thrummy lam gumptulus bummy. Storm gurgle lam bumdula bilp. I want to refer, first of all, to, to the question that uh, is, is often stated, that one man's sauce is another man's acid, I believe. Is that it? No, sauce for the goose, I suppose, as well. Well, whatever it is, you see, it's the question that, uh, uh, that some people uh, actually find that uh, what they call work is what other people call play. Now, I, I suppose that strikes you as odd on the surface, but not I, because me, actually. Because, uh, uh... Only, only free! My father always used to find the most intense pleasure in untangling string and rolling it up neatly into a ball. And it wasn't so much the rolling up into the ball as the figuring out of the maze of the tangles. It's like doing a crossword puzzle. 
and that is of course the deeper and inner meaning of being amazed it's the pleasure of getting involved in a maze with all sorts of twists and turns and tunnels and bridges and the same fascination is really involved in playing music or in singing music making your voice go through all sorts of wiggles I mean, the whole world is wiggles. And the more you think about it, the more you see that there would be no point in trying to get unwiggled or completely untangled. If everything was straightened out, everything would be very dull. I always say that an intelligent person gets paid for playing. That is to say, he makes his living by doing what he really enjoys doing. So that there isn't a hard and fast distinction between work and leisure, or work and play. I think one of the great problems of our culture is that uh, we almost assume that a person has to do a dull thing called work in order to earn the right to live. In music, one doesn't make the end of a composition the point of the composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played faster. And there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People go to concert just to hear one crashing chord, because that's the end. <laughs> but we don't see that as... Uh, something brought by our education into our everyday conduct. We've got a system of schooling which gives a completely different impression. It's all graded. And what we do is we put the child into the corridor of this grade system with a kind of, come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. And yeah, you go to kindergarten, you know. And that's a great thing because when you finish that, you'll get into first grade. And then, come on, first grade leads to second grade, and so on, and then you get out of grade school, you've got high school, and it's revving up, the thing is coming, then you're going to go to college, and by Jove, then you get into graduate school, and when you're through with graduate school, you go out and join the world. And then you get into some racket where you're selling insurance, and they've got that quota to make, and you're going to make that, and all the time, the thing is coming. It's coming, it's coming, that great thing, the, the success you're working for. Then when you wake up one day about 40 years old, you say, my God, I've arrived. <laughs> I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you always felt. And there's a slight letdown because you feel there's a hoax. And there was a hoax, a dreadful hoax. They made you miss everything. And we thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage which had a serious purpose at the end, and the thing was to get to that end. Success, or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing, and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. mostly concerned is of course clock time and this is something quite different from rhythm clock time beats out endlessly and monotonously like a military march clock time therefore to some extent militarizes society and is in conflict with biological time which is a rhythmic swinging process Whereas the clock goes tick, 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 tick. The heartbeat goes tum, 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 tum. Now. 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 
Now! 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 One second is the length of time it takes me to say one thousand. How much overtime did you log last month? Not much? Well, just stop and think a minute. One of America's greatest men, Henry Ford, once said, nobody ever became a success in an eight-hour day. And when your eight hours are up, what do you do? Do you hang it up and head for the exit? But wait, you still have a lot in you, a lot of the real drive and grit that makes America what it is. Don't waste it in idle pastimes. Put in some overtime. Log a few golden extra hours at the old grindstone. Remember, there's no time like overtime. And look at it this way. There's extra pay in overtime. Sometimes time and a half, sometimes double time. So if you want somebody else to get those dollars, knock off after a measly eight hours. But if you want to do it right, do it with overtime. That's overtime. I don't think we've ever had as good a time as we've had since we got on the cable. Fred down the road still got an antenna. He doesn't get a quarter of the programs we get. You know, you can see those bullfights broadcast up from Tijuana. You can see things from from San Jose, coming down from Sacramento. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go back to the antenna, no matter what you paid me. You put the seed in the ground. And you water it, and you have to water it. If you don't go out and water it, nothing happens. And so you go out and water it, and then a week goes by, and nothing's happening, right? There's just still the ground there with a lot of water on it. And then pretty soon, right, you, you go out one day to water it, and there's this little tiny little thing, like it's looking at you. And it's, it's you know, it's like an ecstatic experience that all of a sudden, like, there's this thing growing from the seed you put in the ground and you watered and you go out a few days later and like it's bigger and then it's bigger and it's bigger and bigger and before long right there's there's this vine and there's these little green things hanging all over it and pretty soon they're about six or eight inches long or three feet long even and you've got these cucumbers right and this incredible beautiful plant growing in your yard and you can take the cucumbers in your house and I mean and, and this plant that you've done all this for has given you back right these cucumbers or carrots or 
lettuce or, you know, hundreds of different kinds of things that you can plant. And it's just, I mean, like all of a sudden you realize what it really takes and what you really get, you know, from just putting this one incredible little seed. And some of those seeds aren't even any bigger than a pinhead. And you can get like this huge, we get, we got a huge carrot once, you know, from this incredible little tiny seed. Got a little public service announcement here for our standby house band, Funky Hair and the Painted Guitar. Funky Hair is into a really unusual ecology experiment. From their interest in rhythm combinations, they got into experimenting with the idea of a 28-hour day, six-day week. This allows them to kind of play their own 28-hour life rhythms against society's usual 24-hour rhythm. For example, they can eat lunch one day at 12 noon, the next day they'd be having it at 4 o'clock, the next day at 8 in the evening, and so on. Well, typical of such exciting ecological experiments, there is a problem in the works, and the problem is that the boys are finding it hard to get employment as a rock band. So we're asking that you send suggestions to Funky Hair and the Painted Guitar, here of Channel 9, San Francisco. I got up this morning, and I went over to the heater, and I sat down on the heater, and then my mother asked me to go get the paper, and I went up to the gate and got the paper, and I came back down, and then I had breakfast. I'll tell you about the future. Tomorrow, if my mom says I can have a friend over, I'll have God.